I am well. I'm Key, Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I talk about how I lost 97.4 pounds after starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your Saturday, and I want to say a quick hello to some people who have already popped in, and then I'll get into today's program. Uh, Pia, Pia Nyman, thank you so much, became a member of the club. She's a bravocado. Thank you so much. Our weekly video Bible study, Scott, hello from North Texas. Bright and sunny here. It is thunderstorms here, believe it or not. Thunder boomers. Morning all, good morning, writes uh, Deborah Barnes. And Deb Herbold, good morning from northern Montana. This is 60. Morning. So, can see and hear you. Thank you. Kind of always wait for that from Scott. Okay. For those of you who have never attended one of these, weekly live sessions. Uh, my process is generally to talk about the topic at hand, whatever is noted in the thumbnail. And then about midway through, I do some acknowledgments and then I turn to the comments. First off, if you are new to the protocol, I share it as I learned it and as I've practiced it for now over nine years. Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net carbs. Net carbs is just more carbs. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it, but you don't even need a food list. It's fatty sources of protein and limited amounts of non-starchy vegetables, limited amounts of leafy greens, limited amount, amounts of full fat dairy, if you can tolerate it. And um, that's it. <laughs> the next part, though, is key. Don't eat if you're not hungry. This is by far the most challenging piece for most people and certainly for me. Stop eating when you're satiated. Not eat until you're about to pop. Then I added, be patient and persevere. Also difficult. <laughs> but So that's it. Keep your carbs low. Don't eat if you're not hungry. No other math involved. No percentages. No time of day eating. No ounces of water, no food combinations. Keep your carbs low. And if it's not on page four, don't eat it. So today's topic is keto boundaries. And I really use that word, I thought about it a lot because I, I wanted it to represent many things. So let's break this down. What do I mean by keto boundaries? Well, maybe what's the first thing that pops into your head? I would like to ask that question. But I'll tell you the first thing that pops into my head is setting my own boundaries in regards to other people's opinions. Now, I have no problem with dealing with other people's opinions of what I do or don't eat. Uh, never have really. I'm kind of a contrarian. But particularly since I started this, and, and for those of you who don't know, I was, I was morbidly obese from my mid, where I was obese and then grew to be morbidly obese, from my mid-20s to my mid-50s. By the way, there's an app that I use that's associated with a scale that I use, a very expensive scale. By the way, it says I'm morbidly obese. So I can tell you what I think about that. So anyway, I was morbidly obese, really, from my mid-20s to my mid-50s. I had tried the stuff. I had tried the stuff. And I knew low-carb work for me from 1977 when I was in college. I wasn't obese then. I'd put on... 12 pounds, 13 pounds or something the first two years of college. And I just want to lose it. Get back to my cute, sassy, size six self. So I did the induction. I got the book, did the induction, lost the weight, tossed the book. Then again, in the early 2000s, by now I was morbidly obese. And I did it and, and, and lost some weight. I allowed myself to make an excuse. I, the phrase life came at me. Well, life always comes at us. And life was always coming at me, of course. I'm no special person. And I said, ah, oh, dang it. 
I'm going to eat the bagel. I've had a tough day. From that, you know, all the weight rebounded. And I still had the situation that was a problematic situation that made me eat the bagel. I still had cancer, in other words. Second of three diagnoses. I didn't know it was going to be three. Anyway, I'd given up on losing weight. I did the triathlons. I did the juicing. I did the move more, eat less. I just didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes, and I knew that was on the thing. I'd given up weight loss. So Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes, came across the white coat video of Dr. Eric Westman of Duke University, who is now my friend. And the message was, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Don't, don't eat if you're not hungry. I think he says eat when you're hungry. I, I flipped that. So the next time I ate, I laid off the carbs. So, okay, that's what I was doing. I started losing weight. People were curious around me. People at my office and, you know, my social circle were curious, what are you doing? Oh, wow, that must be so hard. Actually, it's the easiest thing I've ever done. And I feel so much better. But people have opinions. People are fearful that you're going to have a heart attack from eating all that meat. And I don't eat all that meat. It's not like I'm eating, you know, the old 96er from that movie, John Candy movie, The Great Outdoors. I, you know, don't eat if you're not hungry kind of takes care of that. But people can be genuinely concerned, and I appreciate the concern. People think it's crazy. People just think it goes against nutrition and science. I understand that. But I had to set my own boundaries. There, there can be pushback. There can be pushback from our medical providers. They don't know everything. Frankly, they don't know much about nutrition, truth be told. They're not taught it. And some just don't want to know. From family members, from food pushers, from people who are morbid or are overweight or have weight issues themselves and don't really want you to feel and look better. I mean, this is human nature. This is what happens. So that's one of the boundaries. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Setting my own boundaries. Now, another way to think about this, and I've heard this before, and I'll tell you the message is pretty clear because I talk with a lot of people. I hear from a lot of people. The, the questions pretty much are saying, how much can I eat and get away with it? How much can I get away with eating? How many carbs can I fit in and get away with it? Uh, okay, so <clears throat> that's a boundary. What's my boundary for how much I can get away with? I would say entering into any situation or relationship with the mindset of, Okay, I'm going to do this, but how? what can I get away with? Not healthy. Not a good way to be. We don't want to think of how much can we get away with. What's that upper boundary? Now, the inverse is also true. As our appetite diminishes, some people are concerned that, that they're eating so much less than they used to that it can't be good for them. L- let's, let's first start with what median is. Most of us have eaten much more fuel than we require. Okay, I just looked down at the camera, which I try to avoid doing. Am I as orange as I look? Is that, are you seeing me as orange? Do I look like I'm covered in cheese doodle stuff? Wow, weird. Anyway, yeah, that's the way I look, that's the way I look. Um, we eat more than we require as a rule. That's why you look around and... M- Many of us are overweight, obese, morbidly obese, immobile. So eating what is appropriate can seem like way too little. So I heard that I'm concerned. Can this be true? I'm barely hungry, you know, all day. And then I eat and I get satisfied pretty quickly. Yay, that's victory. So what's the lower boundary? Well, only you and your body know that. Stage of life, sex body composition, activity level, hormones, hormones, male and female hormones can impact our fuel requirements. Now, another boundary. I talked earlier about my, my setting up my boundaries, you know, not worrying about information coming from the outside. I also, believe it or not, well, you probably believe it, if you know me well enough, 
my boundary is I don't talk about this unless someone asks me. Now, obviously, go keto with Casey. It's kind of what I do. Uh, it's my whole raison d'etre for this, you know, channel and for my other things I do. But I don't bring it up ever unless someone asks me directly, even when the topic is nutrition or weight or, or medications. That's my boundary. For one thing, I don't like it when people give me unsolicited advice. I don't particularly care for it when people offer me their opinions if I've not asked for it. And also it can be counterproductive. Um, most people don't want to hear. They'll have to come to it themselves. Lead by example. If, if you're doing what works for you and you're feeling better and you're coming off of medications and you, you obviously are, you know, losing body fat and you're, you know, kind of walking more upright and proud, excuse me, and someone sees it and they ask, what are you doing? A lot of times there'll be the tap on the shoulder as you're, you know, you've been in a meeting or a get together or a, you know, church service, whatever it might be. And you're leaving. Can I, can, do, do you mind if I ask you what you're doing? Because you look great. I share. Oh, I do this. And then if they ask, if they ask questions, great. If they say, oh, I could never do that. Okay. I sometimes add, I thought I couldn't do it either. But I did. And then that's the end of the conversation. I don't proselytize. My lovely mate does much more of that than I do. He's down in Colombia right now. I'm sure he's wagged his finger at some people, metaphorically, about what they're eating. I say, honey, don't, no, don't do that. It's none of your business. You don't get a vote on what they eat. Nobody gets a vote on what we eat. Mm. Hashtag Case, Casey's Pink Drink, Tumblr. Full of ice, diet tonic water, a splash of diet cranberry. And I usually have a squeeze of lime. I'm out of limes. My husband's been out of the country all month. And so we usually keep lots of limes in hand because he puts lime juice on everything. So I'm sure there are other boundaries I'm not considering or have not thought of yet. The just realize that, that this is our experience. It's a very personal experience. If our medical provider is not on board, if, if our, you know, cousin who's a nurse thinks it's crazy, if our siblings are don't like it or a partner is not going to change, that's their personal experience. Our experience is our experience. And we are entitled to emotional boundaries when it comes to something as sensitive and highly personal as how we nourish ourselves. So don't be afraid. You don't, we don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a shouting match. You know, someone saying, I, you know, aren't you worried about stroke? No, not really. I feel pretty good and all my numbers are good. And that can be it. By the way, my numbers are great. So it doesn't have to be antagonistic. If someone kind of pushes, I have said, you know what? You know, after like the third or fourth comment or question, I say, yeah, I just don't think this is a, topic that's very interesting to anybody else. Why don't we move on? You know, what I eat is not that interesting. And it's just not. It's just food. There's no special food. I eat the same food I always ate all my life. I just lay off the carbs. I still have meatloaf. It's delicious. I still have chicken. I just leave on the skin and leave off the french fries. I still have steak. I leave on the fat and I leave off the baked potato. I have scrambled eggs and bacon. I leave off the biscuits. 
it's still it's just food. It's no special food. Now, you do not need to purchase one thing to be 100% successful at this protocol. There are no keto foods. There are no keto products. They are actually the opposite of that. So if it's an unregulated term. If it says keto on the label, it's not. Look at the back, see what the total carbs are and what the serving size is and move on. If it's shelf stable, it almost certainly is, is high in carbs. You, and no kits and drinking ketones to, might give you a positive reading on a, on a keto, uh, you know, a measure, but it doesn't mean you're burning fat for fuel. It just means that you've drunk a whole bunch of expensive stuff to make your pee strip go purple. I should say urine. It's nicer than pee. But shameless commerce division, tip of the hat to the car talk guys. I will sell you a t-shirt or a water bottle or a mug or a 12 month record book with thing. I designed it. I had a lot of fun putting this together. I probably should make a volume too. Mood tracker, adult coloring, inspirational, I hope, quotes from smart people. You can see all of this at my blog. There's a link to my spread shop. I just created, designed some things that just say Go Keto with Casey. Not this specific top, which was gifted to me years ago, but t-shirts and stuff. I'm just trying to earn my keep. But you don't need to buy anything. Not even page four. Lay off the carbs. I do want to give a shout out to patrons, some of whom are here. I have a private support group on patreon.com, link below. And for $5 a month starting, you get 20 pre-recorded video snippets, morning snippets for me. The topics usually suggested by patrons. I'm sitting at my patrons. I'm sitting at my breakfast counter, pillow hair, sans makeup, and um, get those every weekday. Going up from there, a handful of patron only video live streams on Crowdcast going up from their one-on-one -on -one sessions with me a month. Thank you very much. And I occasionally send out cards that I design as well about four times a year. Thank you. Commercial over. Now, let me turn to the lovely folks who are here. I'm going to put on my glasses. I do look orange. Okay, a little crafting note. Very good advice. I hope that was something I said. Judy Delege. Juliege writes, love your advice. Cara Z, I guess one of my boundaries to stay away from keto foods. That's a great, yes, that's a great boundary. Before you go into the store, preset yourself for, I'm just, I'm just not even going down those aisles. And you don't have to go down the aisles because they put them on the end caps and they put them at the checkout counters. If it says keto on the label, it's not. Stick with actual food. Tiggy writes, I'm suffering from kidney failure stage 3A because of a medication messed my kidneys up bad. Now I am back on keto. Well, Tiggy, I'm very sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. But you're back on keto. Actually, one of our patrons, she'd been doing the pr protocol. One of my patrons been doing the protocol for about a year and a half. Was discovered that she had a tumor. A, a cancer on one of her kidneys. And of course, logical question. She asks the doctor, did, I've been doing keto. Did I cause this? He said, no, actually, you're probably doing much better than you would have if you'd been following, you know, eating carbs. Continue doing what you're doing. They removed her kidney. And the doctor said, keep it up. No reason not to. That's good for you, Tiggy. Hope everything goes well. Diane Gendra, eggs and bacon are still my favorite breakfast. Every even after three years of keto, carnivore, keto, ketovore and carnivore. Tiggy writes, I'm excited today for my eggs because I have salmon to put in them. Now, some of you may know that we have 35 backyard chickens. And my husband's out of town. He usually eats like seven, eight eggs a day. So we got a lot of eggs. Now, I do sell to some of my neighbors, some regulars, and I give some to my nice neighbor from the backyard, Fred. And, but eggs. So I've been eating a lot of eggs in his absence. I don't really like to cook. I don't mind cooking, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm a lazy cook. So I have eggs and bacon just about every morning. 
I boil up a dozen eggs, keep them on hand, and I'll have those throughout the day. Buck Desno, good morning. LB writes, good morning, Casey. And Tiggy writes, so does everyone do net carbs or total carbs? Now, you must, I, I do total carbs. Honey, net carbs just means more carbs. That's all that is. It's a marketing thing. It's a food manufacturer marketing thing. I promise. If you can tolerate more carbs, fine. Most people who are hearing my voice are like me. They they have, are you know insulin resistant if you want to call that call it that or have hyperinsulinemia, very sensitive to carbs. I am so I don't do net carbs. Plus, if it has net carbs. They're touting that there are fillers in, in other foods. You know, a steak doesn't have net or total. It just is steak. There are no fillers. Shayla Johnson was 274, two years later doing it Casey's way. Now 152. Thank you for keeping it simple. Congratulations, Shayla. Buck Desno, Dr. Westman says total carbs. I try to keep within that limit. Total carbs. Total carbs. Let me repeat the protocol as I learned it. Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net carbs. Net carbs means more carbs. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. <laughs> How do you know what Diane Gender writes? Could you tell us about the necklace you're wearing? Do you know I, I was getting where I thought, I wonder if anyone's going to ask me about my necklace. It's been a while. Yes, this necklace was brought to me from Colombia by my husband probably 30 years ago. It is a, it is a, a symbol of the Chipcha tribe, which is one of the pre-Columbian tribes in Colombia. And it has a little emerald up here. He also brought me all the jewelry I have on, obviously, my husband and mom. He brought me a little... We have a coffee farm, little coffee beans that have an emerald in them. And then this diamond ring and then an emerald, I mean, diamond earring and this emerald ring. And then he brought me this beautiful emerald ring last time. I mean, that is, it looks like it has LEDs in it. Colombia is the world's greatest producer of emeralds and of the highest quality emeralds. Joni Sanchez, good morning, sunshine. Thanks for the inspiration as always. Sweet Casey. Oh, well, thank you, Joni. Buck Desno, just realized Casey reminds me of Sally Jesse Raphael. Really? I'll take that in the spirit. I assume it's intended. I do not strive to look like Sally Jesse Raphael. I like it better when somebody says I look like Jamie Lee Curtis. Gels, mommy, good morning. Good morning, Stacy. I hope you're doing well and managing the bumps in the road. Buck Desner writes, net carbs can be a trick. Continuous glucose monitor shows that often. Now, a CGM is a continuous glucose monitor, which sits on, and I tested one. They sent me one. Um, and it does. It reads your all the time. I did not do a review of it because I can't recommend it, not because it doesn't work, but because it's expensive. And unless you have unregulated blood glucose, I think it's not something that that the general population needs. And I didn't want to say that, so I didn't publish the video review. Up. But the one I got really did work. Barbara Barnes writes, I want, Barnes writes, I want my food thought in the trailer. Right now it's in the back seat but every day gets smaller and smaller in the rear view mirror. I wonder if you're referencing uh, analogy or metaphor. I never know which one it is. That food used to be in the driver's seat for me. It's all I thought about. I mean, I thought about other things. I functioned well, but it was always in the back of my mind. Food was in the driver's seat. And then after I started this, it kind of, okay, well, after about a week, it was like food is in the passenger seat. Then I moved to the back seat. Then I moved to the way back, and now food for me is in the trailer being towed behind my vehicle. It's just not there. Heather Silver, Silva, never snack. But of course, you know, it does, you know, it depends on how you define these things like meals and snacks. 
Some of my meals would be a snack for someone else. Just don't eat if you're not hungry, no matter what you call it, I would say. A little crafty nut. Gorgeous. Misty's House of Tarot Cards. All of your jewelry. So beautiful. Thank you. Diane Jendrick. I own oh, got this. Now, one thing that this came from our Go Keto with Casey Cruise in 2019. We got this. This he gave me years ago, this diamond ring. But this with a, a true chocolate diamond, not not dyed, we got in um, Georgetown. You know, the jewelry stores are just waiting for you as you get off the cruise ship. Diane Jendrick, I have an emerald ring from Columbia. Yours is beautiful. Thank you, little crafty nook. Yes, she's our age. The glasses, it's a compliment. Thank you, Buck. I appreciate it. Diane Jendrick, Jamie Lee Curtis is my hero. Mine too. She recently came out and said, you know, I'm sick of, t I'm sick of all this anti-aging stuff. I am pro-aging. Now I'm really going into shadow. Let me see if I can. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch up with this. Sorry about that. This is probably my last live stream for a few months from here because it's technically spring and I'll start doing them from the kitchen again. And the light is different there. <laughs> Buck writes, okay, her too. I wish. Buck Desno, oh my God, food. Yeah, I noticed on my cat food, it has a saying on it. Food is a love language. Uh huh. Food is not love. This is difficult. Food is not love. Love is love. Food is fuel. Food is not entertainment. Food is not sport. The cards that are going out to patrons, I don't have one near me, is a, 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 a reformatting of a page from one of my Go Keto with Casey calendars. Don't make a food decision. Use the BLAST method, B-L-A-S-T. Use the BLAST method. Don't make a decision about eating. If you are bored, lonely, angry, stressed, or tired. You know, someone said, well, I don't know what to do. I get bored. What am I going to, you know, I, I want to eat. Food is not entertainment. If you're bored, d do a wordle or go gardening or do 15 jumping jacks. Food is not entertainment or sport. Nancy K, food used to be my entertainment, right? It's not entertainment. We have to find something better. Buck writes, preach. Little crafty nook. So agree. My best friend's sister sadly feels this way. She has all but physically destroyed herself. Mm. Diane writes, I like that. Blast. I wish I had one of those cards. You know, I'd show it to you. I actually posted it on Instagram. So you could see it there. Judy Stewart, any of your refrigerator magnets available? I'm all out. Now, I have, I think my spread shop might have some magnets, but not the ones with the picture of the refrigerator. Um, spread shop might have magnets. It has stickers for sure and aprons and things like that. Lisa Briggs, play a game on my phone. Keeps me from snacking. Keep your hands busy. I have that one on my cupboard door. Card of Ketivor Way. I added a W to the end of Blast. It's for watching TV. Except it doesn't really work in a word, does it? Blast. Blast. We blast. Wow. Okay, I am going to wind up. I appreciate you allowing me to be part of your Saturday. Um, everything I've referenced, I think you can find at my blog. The link to my blog is below, caseydurango.com. You can see the book. You can see my spread shop. You can see my favorites, which are things, just everything from the makeup I wear to the colorful lights I have to my singing bowl to all sorts of things, just favorite things I actually use. So thank you so much. Be sweet. Just don't eat sweets. And be aware of your boundaries, whatever those are, however those look to you. Thank you. I'll see you next time. God willing and the creek don't rise.